signing off. You remember the tears from the fake news media when it was obvious that we were going to win. And you know what? They're still crying. Look at them. They're still crying. They're still crying. And let them cry. Let them cry. There's no crying on Gutfeld. <laughs> Earlier this week, the New York Times published a help wanted ad. A staffer actually tweeted this. Folks, the New York Times needs your help. We're looking for false information <laughs> being spread deliberately to confuse, mislead, or influence voters ahead of the 2018 midterms. Tip line here, please share. <laughs> I love the folks part. That's so we'll think they're actually human. Now, when I first heard the Times asking for proof of fake news, I sent them a New York Times gift subscription. <laughs> I mean, really. I mean, think about it. The Times asking for proof of fake news. That's like Dolly Parton setting up a GoFundMe page for breast implants. <laughs> or Michael Moore pleading for more cake. <laughs> or Maroon 5 asking you to write more terrible songs. Yeah, Maroon 5. As if the NFL isn't screwed enough, they hired a car alarm to play at the Super Bowl. I think we found something worse than kneeling before the flag. It's puking in your ear. By you. Talk, <laughs> talk about a dog whistle. Every time that's played, an angel sets itself on fire. <laughs> anyway, here's some fake news, okay? You know that little box on your front page that says all the news that's fit to print? That's fake every time the real story is not fit to print. Like the good news coming out of the Koreas. No nukes is good news, so the Times can't be bothered. Did you hear about our dealings with Poland? If it undermines the Russian collusion narrative, you're not gonna hear much. And there's that endless good news on the economy, but who's counting just people seeing more cash in their wallets? But that's not what the Times wants you to see. No, they want fake news from readers just to camouflage their conveyor belt of bias. And they can't do it without you or a hand mirror. By the way, I'm not saying I don't make mistakes. This is actually what I wore at the Emmys. I knew you two must have been getting into something, but I just didn't imagine it would be this. Um. <laughs> Does it feel good? Uh. Yeah. Very, very angry at my stylist. But I make mistakes every time I open my mouth. That's not fake news, though. The Times misleads by design, and they only admit the big errors when they're actually cornered. Remember this headline? Nikki Haley's view of New York is priceless. Her curtains, $52,701. Yeah. Sounds like they're blaming her for the purchase, because they are. Even though near the bottom of the piece, you'll find out that Obama's staff ordered those curtains for 52 k the most expensive drapery since Joe Biden's hair plugs. <laughs> there are other examples. The recent anonymous op-ed about insiders trying to stop Trump, that could be inducted into the Fake News Hall of Fame, or what I call CNN. <laughs> I kid him. Not really, I don't know. Fact is, real non-fake news means nothing to the Times because to them, it's whatever contradicts their wacky left worldview. Remember their idea of a big thinker? We are following a procedure. I will not yield to the gentleman, and the gentleman will observe regular order. The gentleman will observe regular order. Yeah, and the Times endorsed him. <laughs> what a member. <laughs> Of the House. Of the House. A member of the House. What are you people clapping about? Sick, sick people. 
Plus, when Republicans are in charge, the sun can't possibly shine. So a dystopian world is built and chaos must reign. The Media Research Center compiled words the press uses to describe Trump. He's always angry, furious, outraged, infuriated, livid, erupting, lashing out on a tirade. The good news? He only stabbed Mike Pence twice. <laughs> Could have been worse. So why this language? Well, to make you think the guy's unstable. That's today's narrative, unstable. Next week, it'll be living in a stable with a beautiful mare. Mm. Don't question lifestyles. Absent any harmful deeds by Trump and faced with great economic news, the media must create a daily fear that justifies their sweat-stained night terrors. I mean, how dare you not freak out like The Times, like The View, like CNN. To them, Trump's tweets, they're like spiders. Yet you, because you don't read the times, you sleep through the night like a baby on dry sheets, un <laughs> unlike Krugman. But if you can't live in fear like them, maybe you need a drug. I'll tell you something, things are going great. I got a new job and a bonus. My taxes are down and my neighborhood's safe and clean. <laughs> i tell you something, I sleep well at night. Bummer, isn't it? Huh? You're doing it all wrong. In today's world, it's simply unhealthy if you're not as stressed out as the media wants you to be. If you're not up all night worrying about your problems, then the problem is you. You need to worry about things even if they don't exist. How do I do that? It's called Drama Queen. It's the first drug that creates daily stress by changing the chemical makeup of your brain. Designed specifically to wake you up at 3 a.m. and keep you alert for three solid hours worrying about ridiculous things. The secret ingredient, bad cocaine. Wait, what? Don't worry, I've already put some in your drink, so you'll feel it by the time you get home. What are we gonna do about our horse? It eats so much hay, so much hay, never enough hay. We don't have a horse, Larry. But what if we did? What if we did? We live in a studio apartment in Midtown. What if we move to a farm? Then we need a horse and then we need hay, so much hay. Never enough hay. You are an idiot. I'm leaving you. What about the horse? So how do you feel, Larry? Awful. I was up half the night. I feel terrible. Uh, the horse is right. Excellent. See you in two weeks. So get Drama Queen today, or don't go on with your life without worrying so much. Welcome tonight's guest. He produces more laughs than my hyena feather tickler. I don't like that. TV writer and producer Rob Long. And I wrote it. I wrote that horrible introduction. She's so sharp, she's often mistaken for cheese. I know. I wrote that too. Her new book, Hashtag Do Not Disturb, is out October 9th. Author and TV host, Jedediah Diabila. She'll make you laugh and cry and then very depressed. National Review reporter Kat Tim. He bruised his knee on Mount Rushmore. Former WWE superstar, my massive sidekick Tyrus. Rob. What do you make of the, of, of the media crowdsourcing to help bolster their idea of fake news? I mean, they did this with Sarah Palin's emails. Remember that? Yeah, but it's such a weird thing because they're already doing that. It's mm -hmm. like it, it feels to me like Nick Confessor, Confessore, yeah. the guy, it feels like he needs probably to have a little uh, talk with the, the, whoever the, is the HR mental health uh, yes. <laughs> person at the New York Times because you're not supposed to let the, the wires show. Yeah. And this looks like... They're like letting us already know their playbook, which is to sort of find stuff and then and claim it's fake news. Yeah, that's true. That's very transparent of them. Yeah, they should be doing it. They, they should be sitting around going, let's find. And also, like, they keep saying whenever they make a mistake, it's like, well, we don't have enough editors. Yeah. I guarantee you, in the New York Times building, there are enough editors. Yes, exactly. It's just that they're all partisan Democrats. Yeah, and they're cash strapped, so they need this. They need uh, yeah. a crowd to help them do this. I think the real crowdsourcing, Jedediah, are the people that forced them to do corrections. The ones <laughs> yeah. when they saw the Nikki Haley, that was real crowdsourcing. Right. Everybody, because if nobody, like if Fox News had just said, what you did to Nikki Haley was terrible, they would just say, that's Fox News. 
Right. But well, they should have just retracted that. That was yeah. ridiculous. Well, when they, they did. Do they, these, right. How long does it take? And when they do these little corrections that nobody reads in fine print, I'm just curious what's disinformation. They, they say they're going on this disinformation campaign, to try to find all the, the misinformation out there. What is misinformation to the New York Times? Seriously, they're going to be looking at people's Facebook posts in their Facebook groups. If I had a Facebook post out that was talking about Hillary Clinton, the liar in the last election, they would call that misinformation. Right. I would call that the truth because she's a liar mm -hmm. but honestly now it's going to be i'm wondering if you're going to see a list of items from the daily caller town hall foxnews.com conservative pundits and they're going to call that misinformation when in fact those are a lot of the people that are fact checking the new york times you know you should write a book on hillary clinton and it's called misinformation <laughs> wow you already... i come up with these ideas almost Monthly. You already titled my next book. Don't say it. Oh no, I did. Don't say the, the, it. I came up with a, a book, uh, a nutrition book called the Jetta Diet. He's got to say it. <laughs> wow. Thank you. And Kat, I've come up with a lot of titles for your podcast, none of which are printable. <laughs> anyway, Kat, um, is your opinion swayed very much by media spin? No. No. That's good. <laughs> it's not. I think it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out mm -hmm. because I wonder if they will just cover the fake news that hurts Democrats right. rather than also covering the fake news that might go against President Trump. Because mm -hmm. if you really care about fake news and that's your issue, then you have to cover both. Right. Um, also, I think that this is making the assumption, this entire thing is making the assumption that fake news is the reason why Trump won the election. Right. right. That's what a lot of liberals think. They're going to be very disappointed when they find out that's not the case. They Trump won the election because Hillary Clinton was a nightmare of a candidate. Yeah. And it really was that simple. Yeah. I'm beginning to believe uh, knocking Hillary will get applause. Mm. I've, been, I've been doing it. I didn't even knock her. I didn't even knock her, Tyrus. I just said maybe if I knock her. It was a pre-knock. It was a pre-knock. I had a pre-knock agreement months yeah. and it didn't work out. Um, Trump administration has rattled the media in such a good way, in some ways, right? That they're doing this. Yeah, I mean, well, I would say they keep them honest, but uh, you know that's not happening. Yeah. I think uh, <laughs> it's gotten to the point where this was a board meeting. You know, this was a meeting. This was a group. Yes. <laughs> of five or six editors, like Johnson. What do you got? Yeah. Rush is not working. Yeah. He's an adulteress. Not working. He's lying. It's not working. He's rude. Not working. What do you got? Uh. Uh, quick, something. Let's go to the people. Yeah. Maybe we could. Maybe there's some really good liars in the street that have some really good stuff. I saw some stuff on Facebook. We could do that, and that's basically it's like that's our new campaign. Yeah. It's not us. Mm -hmm. It's the people. So now they're trying to blame it on us. Yeah. Because the fight that they're having is failing miserably. It hasn't really. None of the, no one has seen a story about Trump from his side. Has been like. You have, wow, I, wow, you know what? Thank you. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. The hell with this guy. Now it's like, you, it just gets worse for them. You know what the thing is? All the stories begin with the bad stories with, well, he said this. Nobody cares about what he said anymore. It's whether he's done stuff. And so far, what he's done is fairly, fairly productive. So no one, when he says, well, did you hear what he said? It's like, yeah, that's like, it's like, yeah, I took cabs. Yeah, I heard what he said, <laughs> yeah. but I was busy buying my new boat with my extra tax money. So I really don't care what he's going to say because I'll be on. On my boat <laughs> and there's no reception on my brand new boat whose fault is that that i paid cash for right who buys a boat this guy don't buy it you know what Sum it up. The media, the media is now like I don't remember the Three Stooges. There was always one yes. lady in Three Stooges that was constantly freaking out, like, "Oh, get away!" That's the media. Yeah, the media is the yeah. lady from Three Stooges, or actually the Marx Brothers, Mar Margaret Ma Dumont. Yes, I'm Margaret sorry. You know Dumont. what? I got it confused. Yeah, Margaret right. Dumont is the one. See, that's why you're in TV, you're and I'm some weirdo. <laughs> All that, right, that, that's not the only reason. Why. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so true. What do Bob Woodward, Alec Baldwin, Stormy Daniels, and Rob Long have in common? Whatever it is, it's contagious. Mm. Like me after eating eight bean burritos and some dark roast coffee, Stormy Daniels is letting it all out. 
She's got a new book out. Uh, it's called uh, Full Disclosure, and she's telling everything, and I mean everything, about that time in the hotel room with Trump, kiss and tell. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you can Google it, but why? I run a classy show here. So yeah, Stormy's got a book about, out about Trump. Bob Woodward's got a book about Trump. Alec Baldwin wrote a book about Trump. And so did Rob Long. You're welcome, Rob. There's your plug. Thank you. Yeah. Look at that. I enjoyed that book. Book of poetry. Honestly, has anybody been better for the book industry than Donald Trump? <laughs> Hell no. You got a story about Trump? You got yourself the makings of a book. In fact, anything that happens to you regarding Trump, big, small, or utterly pointless, can become a book. Here is a stack of books that are coming out soon. Okay, let's go to this one. See that? I sneezed. Did the president say, bless you, Carl? No. That's an actual book. Ooh. Trump cut in front of me at Baskin Robbins and then broke wind. Oh, that's a favorite. Trump tweeted that I have sleepy eyes, which I do, but that's not my fault. I guess that's Chuck Todd's, Chuck Todd's memoir. All right, I, uh, uh, yeah, uh, I was hired to DJ a Trump family wedding and he grabbed the mic and said I had low energy and was a waste of money. <laughs> I didn't know Jeb, I didn't know Jeb had a night job. All right. Trump didn't hold the door open for me in 1986 at Studio 54. Then I was framed for cocaine possession in the bathroom. Truth is, I had already finished all the coke I came with. <laughs> anyway, if you want to hang out later, I'd love to tell you about my screenplay I'm working on. And do you know where I can get some more coke? All right. Jedediah, yeah. you're a busy person. You have a great new book coming out. Do you, it, are you interested in reading any of these books? Do you have an idea for a no, Trump book? No, it's so sad. I purposely left Trump out of my book because really? I was afraid that I would marginalize half the country if I brought him in. I was like, oh, half the country is going to hate me. Half the country will love me. I'd rather try to appeal to more people. But now that I think of it, mm -hmm. even if Trump hated the book, he would have tweeted it out yes. and I would have sold a ton of books. That is true. Who's dumber than me? No, well, he hasn't tweeted. Should have went after Trump in the book. Yeah, you should have. You should have. Uh, he hasn't tweeted about my book. Cat, if you were to write a book about Trump, what would it be about? It would be about anything but Trump. Okay. <laughs> Ooh, that's a great title. Anything, anything but, but Trump. Trump. Well, seriously, a lot of these books that come out, these tell all books, mm -hmm. they do absolutely nothing to change anyone's mind whatsoever. If you're reading it and you believe everything in it, you hated Trump before you picked up that book. Right, right. And if you're someone who supports Trump, you kind of don't really find it credible, you think that it's all anonymous claims, and you see it more as the media going after Trump. And I think in the case of a lot of Trump supporters, even if every single thing and every single one of these tell-all books were true, I don't think they'd really care because they liked the results, they liked the yeah. policies, they liked the vision that he has for the country. So I don't think it makes a difference. So people would be better off writing books about like cross-stitching or <laughs> like frog genetics. Mm -hmm. That would change just as many minds about Trump as these books are going to change. Mm -hmm. How about Cross stitching a frog. <laughs> Not Greg. Oh, Greg. All of a sudden, we're pro frog. <laughs> Jeez Louise. That's vile. It is vile. Tyrus, um, I, I've given this a lot of thought. Yeah. I, I don't really know about the content, but I got the cover down. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Tyrus and Trump. TNT. Ooh. Two guys who just don't give a. <laughs> And it's for teens. It's for everybody. <laughs> it's so for I, everybody. No, is it for real? Because no one, you've, have you heard kids today? Yeah, they, they're terrible. Yeah, I walked by a school to pick up my daughter. Yeah. I learned new stuff. Yes. Yeah. She's four. It's true. She's the mouth on them. Yes, it's true. The terrible. The things they Google. It's watch terrible. Watch your kids. Yeah, watch your kids. I don't want to have to. All right, Rob. Yeah. I'm not allowed to, by the way, just by... Uh, yeah, you got it. 100, 101 yards from any school yeah, or church. How did you yeah. know? Well, um, it's, the, it's the law. It yes, is I the law. Identified. You know, I went, to, I went to law school just to figure that out. You know, um, you have a, you have obviously had a, a Trump book out. Yeah. Um, how did it do? Well, um, it didn't cause me any tax trouble. <laughs> Put it that way. No, I, so I took I took some speeches and interviews and stuff, and I like arranged it like poetry because he kind of talks like poetry a little right, bit. Right. Yeah. Not you know 
elegant poetry, but it's got a certain rhythm stuff. It's poetic. And so people who love Trump didn't like it because they thought I was making fun of him. And if you really love Trump, you're not allowed to make fun of him. Right. Don't make fun of the, you know, yeah. God King. Right. Yeah. And people who hate Trump thought, you can't make fun of him. He's the the most evil thing ever. It's like making fun of, you know, Hitler. Yeah. So people who love Trump didn't buy the book and people who hate Trump didn't this buy the is, book. This was my fear. So basically nobody, nobody bought the book. <laughs> I read the book, but I did pick it up in the back in the green room. So I'm sorry. I owe you <laughs> whatever that idea is. Just get with me after the show. But I have an. I have an. Go ahead. I would say his talking style. Is, you pointed out great. Yeah. He learned like Don King. Yeah. His wrestling background. Like he learned how to to speak that way, he which is, was kind of almost like a flow, like a rhyme when he talks. Muhammad Ali was the same way. It's a great way to communicate. And Don King was a big. Big opponent with how he learned his public speaking back in the day. Yeah, that's Check so true. They're very, they're very similar in that manner. My idea is a book of recipes. I, um, a, a recipes with only four ingredients, which would be well done steak, ketchup, diet, coke, and fried chicken. I calculated with four variables, you have 10,000 combinations with those four right. ingredients. So that would, I don't have a name for it though, but I think it would be called uh, Remaindered. Remain. <laughs> that's a book <laughs> term for being discounted heavily. Yeah. Like your face. <laughs> Still to come, when will the media wake up and cover the Brett Kavanaugh story? It's like I have to do everything around here. Breathe free. Live from America's News Headquarters, I'm Marianne Rafferty. The woman accusing Brett Kavanaugh of sexual assault has tentatively agreed to testify before a Senate committee on Thursday. But several elements involving Christine Blasey Ford's testimony remain unclear. Talks are set to continue Sunday. Ford says the Supreme Court nominee attempted to rape her decades ago at a high school party. Kavanaugh has categorically denied the allegation. And overseas, the death toll from a tragic ferry accident in Tanzania is more than 200. But an engineer managed to survive the disaster. He locked himself in a small room inside the ship and divers pulled him to safety. Authorities say he's in serious condition. The ferry's captain has been arrested. Investigators allege that he had someone untrained steering that vessel. As many as 400 passengers may have been on a ferry with a capacity limit of 100. I'm Marianne Rafferty. Now well, just between the end of that last segment and this segment, I think uh, three more books just came out about Trump. I know. Here are, here are a few. Here are a few. Uh, Trump made me cook his steak well done. I mean, who eats well done steak? Oh, I remember this guy. The president pushed me aside at a global leaders summit and I'm still mad. Oh, this goes way back. Um, in the first grade, Trump borrowed my pencil and when he gave it back, it had bite marks on it. All right. All right, well, an accusation undo a nation. Attorneys for Kavanaugh accuser Christine Blasey Ford said their client wants to testify next week before the Senate Judiciary Committee, but it won't be Monday and it won't be unless the terms are fair. Good. I hope they work this out so we can weigh all the testimony and decide with all the facts presented to us. The way our system of justice is supposed to be innocent until proven guilty, not the other way around. Yeah. Yeah. These people in Congress right now and that Senate Judiciary Committee, these white men, old, by the way, mm -hmm. are not protecting women. They're yeah. protecting a man who is probably guilty. Mm. She's always so helpful. As is Democratic Senator Macy Hirono, Hirono, who says Dr. Ford, quote, needs to be believed. Isn't that another way of saying Kavanaugh's guilty? But she's actually going further than that. Guess who's perpetuating all of these kinds of ac actions? It's the men in this country. And I just want to say to the men in this country, just shut up and step up. Do the right thing all right. for a change. I think the right thing is to not make sweeping generalizations. But that's me. Seems to me if we're going to take all accusations as fact without a fair hearing, then we really don't need a legal system at all. So we really don't even need a Supreme Court. And therefore, we don't need a Justice Kavanaugh. So I guess we can all go home. Right, Clyde? Yeah! Clyde always agrees with me, Kat. 
You know, no matter what happens, I think the country's really going to unite when this is over. <laughs> right. Be divided forever. <laughs> yes. What do you think? I mean, it, it, what do you think of this? It, it seems to me that we, you either, if, if you, you don't believe, then you're in another camp, right? And why can't you take something seriously and reserve judgment? I don't get it. I don't know what to think. Mm. So I don't really have a camp to go home to. I'm yes. just wandering around in the forest. Yes. <laughs> because on the one hand, why would she lie? Her life has been made way more difficult because of this. She's getting death threats. She's fearing for her safety. On the other hand, normally when there's an accusation like this, a bunch more accusations pop up because men who do things like this generally don't do them just one time. Mm -hmm. So I want to flat out say that I don't know. And I think a lot of the people who are claiming that they know for sure one way or another, their reasoning for their belief is based on partisanship rather than on the facts because yeah. the facts are super unclear. People are saying she must be believed. You have to believe her. They don't want Kavanaugh on the Supreme Court. And a lot of people who are saying she's lying, she must be lying, do want Kavanaugh on the Supreme Court. And that's what they're basing it on rather than the facts. I don't know how, looking at the facts, any reasonable person could say for sure that they know one way or the other. Yeah, this is something you can't know anything about, Tyrus, correct? Yeah, because my name's Bennett and I ain't in it. I'm not going to make <laughs> general um, ideas off my belief system. I feel in this case, this is very similar. I talked about with Clarence Thomas in, mm -hmm. back in the day. And I think Ty because both people are going to tell their story. Mm -hmm. So much time has passed and there's really not going to be any, in my opinion, my humble opinion, I don't see how we're going to know one way or the other just because of the time there's other witnesses or facts or police reports or things like that. So if it comes down to both people's statements, you can't, I think Ty should go to the accused mm -hmm. just based off just my opinion. Well, that's the, yeah. the justice is like, uh, you're, you're, you're can have innocent an until question. proven yeah. guilty. But in the, in the court of public opinion, Rob, we have flipped this. It's right. now you are guilty and you should just go away. Well, you're only guilty if we don't like you already. Yes. Like you have to not like him already to think that he's guilty. There are no facts that are going to come out. No one has any facts. This happened 30 plus years ago. Mm -hmm. The guy says he wasn't even there. She says, I'm pretty sure it was you. Mm -hmm. there, there's nothing new to come out. It's really going to be two stories being told. I mean, they're both pitching two different movies. Yeah. And only one of them is going to be the, you know, the box office hit. Mm -hmm. And I think his problem is... How do I treat this person with respect and with dignity, even though what she's saying isn't true? Yeah, and she and and it, it is it is a challenge because you have to be so delicate about what you say, or else you will be attacked. And I think Jedediah, the, 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 my trouble with this is politics is now. Uh, the art of personal destruction. Right. Uh, nothing is sacred. If, I, if you're politically different from me, I will come after you. And I, and I, and I think that all, all men and women, we shouldn't be divided on ge by gender on this. Right. It's not about gender. It's not about gender. It's about the idea that somebody, somebody can wake up one day, make an allegation. I don't know if it's true. I wasn't there. Nobody in this room knows. None of us were there. There were three people in the room. It was 30 something years ago. She doesn't remember when it happened. She doesn't exa remember exact details. Everyone has said we want you to come forth and we want you to speak your mind. Mm. But that doesn't mean that on second one, there's a victim and there's a perpetrator. Yeah. That has not been decided yet. That's not fair. And watching this media coverage of, I don't want any, I don't care if it's a woman or a man or a dog. I don't want someone to be able to accuse someone of something that's very serious and immediately be believed. No, let's hear everybody out. Let's get the facts. Let's figure it out. It's not fair to either party. And by the way, her legal team is infuriating. Mm -hmm. They should not be able to set the terms of no. this hearing. Mm -hmm. There are rules to be followed. Neither she nor Kavanaugh's team should be able to set the rules. You go when you're supposed to go. She can't decide when she's going to speak. She, she said she wants to speak. She wants him to speak first. Right. How can he right. speak first? He has to respond to what she's saying. I, I'm not saying that I don't believe her. I'm saying I don't know. Yeah. And that's and I, okay. It's been super gross to see so many people on the left use her like a political pawn. Right. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these people are saying, well, I believe women, believe women. But they're the same people who certainly wouldn't believe all the women who accused Bill Clinton of sexual assault, yeah. which is way more than just yeah. one. Yeah. Uh, I just, yeah. The one hilarious thing in this whole situation was that a senator actually said, shut up and step up, yeah. which is hilarious because we have a Senate who does not do that. <laughs> so yeah. for them, you want to blame it on the bros? Yeah. How, where's the bipartisanship? Yeah. You know, it's amazing. And right. it could flip, honestly. Yeah, yeah. Oh. It could be a woman or a man in oh, this no. position. It's, it, it's every, so, yeah, every... It, Everybody is unsafe when you remove due process yeah, from the no world. No justice. That's why America's different.
And speaking of things that haven't been confirmed, Bert and Ernie sexuality, that's next. <laughs> It's the latest heat to hit Sesame Street. This week, a former Sesame Street writer was asked if Bert and Ernie were gay. Said Mark Saltzman, who began writing for the show in 84, quote, I always felt that without a huge agenda when I was writing Bert and Ernie, they were. I don't think I know how else to write them, but as a loving couple. Okay. Meanwhile, Sesame Street released two statements in response. They say Bert and Ernie are just friends and because their puppets have no sexual orientation. And Frank Oz, the guy who created Bert in the 60s, says they're not gay. Okay. So does this settle it? Maybe or maybe we need a second opinion. Uh, please welcome Bert and Ernie's former roommate. We have Cl <laughs> Clive, uh, Clive Parker Hughes, who joins us from Helsinki, Finland. All right. All right. Uh, Clive, uh, I'm glad you could be here. Where am I? Well, you're on Fox News, Clive. Fox News? More like faux news. <laughs> Get it? Faux news? You're faux. <laughs> I'm very clever. Faux news. Write that one down. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we were talking about Sesame Street, and since obviously you're a puppet, I was thinking, you know... I'm the puppet. No, no, Gary. You're the puppet. A puppet of faux news and their right-wing overlords. You're a puppet of Vladimir. Putin and the Koch brothers. <laughs> Let me tell you a story, Gary. I once farted two pounds of glitter at a kid's birthday party and everyone loved it. When have you ever made a difference in someone's life like that? Faux news, white male puppet. Resist! Resist! <laughs> All right, can we just please stick to the topic? Of course. Anything to avoid talking about evil Donald Trump. Yes, he's evil. And you're evil. You're lucky I'm not there in the studio with you, pal, or else I'd peel off your face and wear it to a cousin's birthday house party. <laughs> By the way, do you have any cocaine? <laughs> I'm starting to come down. No, Clive, I don't have any cocaine. Uh, by the way, though, are you naked? Yes. It seems that I am. Hmm. I, I wasn't earlier. I'm not sure how that happened. Anyway, does that offend you? That I'm okay with my body? That I love the feeling of the air against my naked felt? Listen, you old white male, I don't live by your rules. I got a girlfriend and a boyfriend, two boyfriends, three boyfriends, and I could eat you and crap you out like a furry fax machine. Next question. All right. Uh, one more time, Clyde. You lived with Bert and Ernie in the early years. What was that like? <laughs> those guys. I'm out. <laughs> I knew we should have pre-interviewed him. <laughs> Tyrus. <laughs> oh, so so many things wrong with that. Um, um listen, uh, listen. Yes. I, I I grew up. Bert Ernie, one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. A puppet is a puppet. Yeah. It can't be anything, anything else besides a puppet. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I, I get it. <laughs> Do you want to get into the real scandal? You talk about Cookie Monster and all his baby mamas. That's a real, <laughs> that's a real scandal. <laughs> Snuffleupagus drug problem. We could talk about that. But, you know, they're puppets. They're not. Yes. We can't, we can't make them heterosexual. Mm -hmm. You know, we no. can't. We, they don't have yell. the genitals. Yeah, they, they don't. They are puppets. They, they're just felt in a hand. Of a stranger. Okay, we talked about this in the back, Greg. We're not talking. Do right. not encourage him. No yeah. hands in the puppets. Rob, isn't this again like the evidence of like how identity politics just goes everywhere it can go? Yeah. <laughs> uh, raging puppet phobia you have. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, but before we go, I want to say that was a very funny segment. And who was doing the voice? Was that Lou Dobbs? Yes, it was Lou Dobbs. Yes, he's, he's great. Yes. He's just really good. He's really good. You don't think that he could do that, but he can yeah. totally do that.
He's going to be very happy uh, that you outed him. Yeah. Well, listen, I mean, he's a talented man. He's a yeah. talented man. He shouldn't just be doing one thing. Yes. He's got facets like me. <laughs> Jed? I got to tell you, I, I think it's over for us as a society that we're talking about this. We're talking about they had to come out and say these puppets don't have a sexual orientation. And there are people that are sitting there like, Oh, okay. Like they're processing that. They're actually thinking about this. Well, no, but are they gender fluid? I mean, this is we're talking about puppets. Ugh. Like I'm, I'm scared for yeah. all of us. Cat, uh, uh, can't this be one of TV's great mysteries? And leave it at that. Or no. A great mystery to me is never someone else's sex life. <laughs> yeah. Because I really don't give a. Sh yeah. <laughs> I mean, seriously, if you're talking, I don't care about the sex lives or sexual preferences of real human beings. Mm. I'm not about ready to care about the sex lives or sexual preferences of beings that are A, not beings, not real, and B, don't exist below the waist. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and C, don't exist below the waist. <laughs> because the puppets. Thank you. Rob, one of these days, they're going to look at this show and go, how we were anti-puppet, and maybe they have it already. Yeah. Look, sure. I mean, I, 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 uh, who knows? All I know is that on Reddit right this minute, there's some really, really, really interesting uh, puppet porn being written. Yes. yes. <laughs> and if there isn't, yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, I'm pretty sure there probably are some puppets with sex lives. Yes, exactly. But that's not the puppet's choice. It's the creepy dude What's with the puppet because it's a puppet. Coming up, is your dog jealous over your phone? Probably not, but let's pretend anyway. How adorable. It's the latest heat to hit Sesame Street. This week, a former Sesame Street writer was asked if Bert and Ernie were gay. Said Mark Saltzman, who began writing for the show in 84, quote, I always felt that without a huge agenda when I was writing Bert and Ernie, they were. I don't think I know how else to write them, but as a loving couple. Okay. Meanwhile, Sesame Street released two statements in response. They say Bert and Ernie are just friends and because their puppets have no sexual orientation. And Frank Oz, the guy who created Bert in the 60s, says they're not gay. Okay. So does this settle it? Maybe or maybe we need a second opinion. Uh, please welcome Bert and Ernie's former roommate. We have Cl Clive, uh, Clive Parker Hughes, who joins us from Helsinki, Finland. All right. All right. Uh, Clive, uh, I'm glad you could be here. Where am I? Well, you're on Fox News, Clive. Fox News? More like faux news. <laughs> Get it? Faux news? Your foe. <laughs> I'm very clever. Faux news. Write that one down. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we were talking about Sesame Street, and since obviously you're a puppet, I was thinking, you know... I'm the puppet. No, no, Gary. You're the puppet. A puppet of faux news and their right-wing overlords. You're a puppet of Vladimir. Putin and the Koch brothers. <laughs> Let me tell you a story, Gary. I once farted two pounds of glitter at a kid's birthday party and everyone loved it. When have you ever made a difference in someone's life like that? Faux news, white male puppet. Resist! Resist! <laughs> All right, can we just please stick to the topic? Of course. Anything to avoid talking about evil Donald Trump. Yes, he's evil. And you're evil. You're lucky I'm not there in the studio with you, pal, or else I'd peel off your face and wear it to a cousin's birthday house party. <laughs> By the way, do you have any cocaine? <laughs> I'm starting to come down. No, Clive, I don't have any cocaine. Uh, by the way, though, are you naked? Yes. It seems that I am. Hmm. I, I wasn't earlier. I'm not sure how that happened. Anyway, does that offend you? 
that I'm okay with my body, that I love the feeling of the air against my naked felt. Listen, you old white male, I don't live by your rules. I got a girlfriend and a boyfriend, two boyfriends, three boyfriends, and I could eat you and crap you out like a furry fax machine. Next question. All right. Uh... One more time, Clyde. You lived with Bert and Ernie in the early years. What was that like? <laughs> those guys. <laughs> I'm out. I knew we should have pre-interviewed him. <laughs> Tyrus. <laughs> Oh, so, so many things wrong with that. Um, um, listen, uh, listen yes. I, I, I grew up, Bert and Ernie, one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. A puppet is a puppet. Yeah. It can't be anything, anything else besides a puppet. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I, I get it. If you want to get into the real scandal, you talk about Cookie Monster and all his baby mamas. That's a real, <laughs> that's a real scandal. <laughs> Snuffleupagus drug problem, we could talk about that, but... You know, they're puppets. They're not... Yes. We can't, we can't make them heterosexual. Mm -hmm. You know? We no. can't... We, they don't have the genitals! Yeah, they, they don't. They are puppets. They, they're just felt in a hand of a stranger. Okay, we talked about this in the back, Greg. We're not talking... Do right. not encourage him. No yeah. hands in the puppets. Rob, isn't this, again, like the evidence of, like, how identity politics just goes everywhere it can go? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, raging puppet phobia you have. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, but before we go, I want to say that was a very funny segment. And who, and who was doing the voice? Was that Lou Dobbs? Yes, it was Lou Dobbs. Yes, he's, he's great. Yes. He's just really good. He's really good. You don't think that he could do that, but he can yes. totally do that. He's uh, going to be very happy uh, that you outed him. <laughs> yeah. Well, listen, I mean, he's a talented man. He's a yeah. talented man. He shouldn't just be doing one thing. Yes. He's got facets like me. <laughs> Jed? I got to tell you, I, I think it's over for us as a society that we're talking about this. We're talking about they had to come out and say these puppets don't have a sexual orientation. And there are people that are sitting there like, Oh, okay. Like they're processing that. They're actually thinking about this. Well, no, but well, are they gender fluid? I mean, this is we're talking about puppets. Ugh. Like I'm, I'm scared for yeah. all of us. Cat, uh, uh, can't this be one of TV's great mysteries? And leave it at that. Or no. A great mystery to me is never someone else's sex life. <laughs> yeah. Because I really don't give a. Sh yeah. <laughs> I mean, seriously, if you're talking, I don't care about the sex lives or sexual preferences of real human beings. Mm. I'm not about ready to care about the sex lives or sexual preferences of beings that are A, not beings, not real, and B, don't exist below the waist. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and C, don't exist below the waist. <laughs> because the puppets. Thank you. Rob, one of these days, they're going to look at this show and go, how we were anti-puppet, and maybe they have it. Anti-puppet, yeah. Look, sure. I mean, I, 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 uh, who knows? All I know is that on Reddit right this minute, there's some really, really, really interesting uh, puppet porn being written. Yes. <laughs> and if there isn't, yeah. yeah, unfortunately, I'm pretty sure there probably are some puppets with sex lives. Yes, exactly. But that's not the puppet's choice. It's the creepy dude What's with the puppet because it's a puppet. Coming up, is your dog jealous over your phone? Probably not, but let's pretend anyway. How adorable. <laughs>